When you're born with the ability to travel through time, the first thing you must learn is that you cannot be in more than one place at the same point in time. Special though you may be, you are not immortal. You must give due consideration, not only to when and where you do things, but also what you do while there. The second thing to bear in mind is that your gift, like rage, is meaningless without power. Yet all power on Seol lies in the hands of the Lael Empire. The Inkies have disregarded both principles. They labeled their rebellion an eternal war, though the resistance certainly failed to live up to that title. It all ended with the fall of Mirage Mountain. Cobalt King calling headquarters. 1200, 4, 76, 12. Beginning descent, do you copy? Cobalt King calling headquarters. 1200, 4, 76, 12. Beginning descent, do you copy? Copy that, 1200. 4, 76, 12, Cobalt King. Navigation says we're on target above the city. Countergravity anticipated in three, two, one, and it's a go. Cobalt King to the pack, two Merensteins at 55. I'd rather not have to face them one on one. Copy that, Cobalt King. 20 and 22. There are two Merensteins at 55. No, 54. Scatter this floating fortress around a little. Bellwether, 22 reported. 21 and 9 have got my back. Resist me, we'll smack against the train wall. I'll have to make a contact. Tokyo! Bellwether, 20 is down. Affirmative, 22. Time capsule active. Let's go. Yeehaw! 
this is how it's done, fellas. All present and accounted for? A fact. Close up and report. Cobalt King, airspace in your zone is spick and span. Much obliged, Bellwether. Cobalt King to headquarters. 600, 4, 112, 12. In position. Half near to launch. Stop about 600. 4, 112, 12. The fourth unity. Three bombs killed 664,000 Inkies that day. To the elated cries of nearly two billion citizens of the Empire. But this is also where I lost my son. He was the pilot of the Cobalt King, the bomber that carried the fourth bomb, the one that never dropped. He did the unthinkable. Unprecedented in the history of military aviation, he ignored his orders. According to the news, the co-pilot buried a bullet in my son's brain that very instant. An Imperial father would have been shattered to hear of this treason and struck dumb with shame. Me? I'm just a collaborationist father, a secondary citizen who resembles an Imperial father only in grief. I have not torn my clothes from my body in mourning. I have not apologized for the actions of my progeny. I have sworn revenge. Monita Point. We call it the Eternal War, but to be realistic, the bombing of Mirage Mountain all but wiped our nation off the map. Since the war broke out, more than two million Enkis have vanished without a trace. Imperial stormtroopers and collaborationist headhunters dragged them away, women, men, and children alike. The way we figure it, data in the Monita research base might point us to their location and how we may be able to help them. We shall take every measure, no matter how few our numbers may be. Ito, it's Driad. We're at the rift. Beginning descent. Good luck, Akita. Activity in the confinement area is about what we expected. I'll make a little noise to draw their attention.
odd. Hold on. I think I saw something strange. I'll make a lap around the observation tower. What is it, Ito? Nothing. Sorry for the false alarm. Wait. Damn. How to sneak up on him? Akita! Akita, do you copy? Are we gonna get the help? God fucking damn it. Fuck. Die, you son of an ass. Akita. Akita. in there, cough. <laughs> service tunnel.
Piri, where are you, Piri? Ah, I see your watchdog's awake. Regis Piri was the gunner of the Cobalt King, fifth in a staff of seven. He wasn't my son's killer, but my revenge caught him up, as it did all other members of that damn crew. It took me circles to find him. The Empire cast him into Boku Mono for rape. And for all anyone cared, he could have rotted there forever. The girl he raped was an Inky named Miriam Magusa, but her racial handicap was a well-kept secret. Should it ever come to light, she'd end up in a dirty, forgotten labor camp like the rest. So far, she's dodged suspicion. Imperialists are too half-witted to look beneath the surface. She was young and tough, but more important for my purposes, she was a pilot who could be politically compromised. I needed her to help me pay that bastard back for the death of my son. Fury wormed his way into her body. I did the same with her soul. I threatened her with exposure, so she stuck by me. <laughs> 